and welcome to the latest edition of On Maps. We're going to go through some exam advice. We're going to be talking about our updated servers, Ooh. and we're going to be talking about the Paper 2 prediction. Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin, and so the exam is very, very close. Apparently, it's one day's. Should be probably one day in the bottom left hand side of the screen. So your exam's coming up and a lot of you are messaging me asking have you got any advice for the exam or what to do just before the exam, getting loads of questions. So I thought I'd just make a quick video going through my top five pieces of advice. So number one, be equipped. It is a frustration seeing students walk into the exam without pens, rulers, protractors, compasses. Bring your own, don't rely on the school giving you that equipment. Most schools, in fact, hopefully all schools, will give you that equipment in the exam. But isn't it nicer to have your own stuff? Uh, I remember a girl I taught a while ago, a couple of years ago, and she borrowed a pen that didn't work and she didn't want to cause a fuss and so she just struggled on. Bring your own stuff, bring loads of pens, loads of pencils. Um, most exam uh, halls require you to have a see-through pencil case, so get a see-through pencil case tomorrow if you haven't got one. Uh, you probably will have one for the exams and bring your own stuff. The compasses, sometimes when you borrow them the the point isn't as sharp or they go like this and they're not stiff enough, they need to tightened up etc etc. It's so much better you just bring your own. Um, if you have time tomorrow and you haven't got some stuff just go to the shops, nip to the shops, Tesco or whatever, ask your parents or guardians or whatever to just get you the stuff. Uh, obviously Thursday's exams are none calculator one but you need to make sure whether you're high on foundation, you've got yourself a calculator. Um, I would definitely recommend you get your own calculator in preparation for the calculator exam. The reason being is sometimes uh, the exam halls don't have the same type that you've used in your lessons. Um, these Casio ones are by far the best, uh, especially, I mean, back in my day, uh, we didn't have the fraction button. Now they do have a fraction button, so you can pretty much do any calculation you want on these. Uh, the only things these don't do is draw graphs, it does everything else. Um, also, uh, on the calculator, make sure it's set to, um, to degrees, which is the little D here. Basically, in degrees, there are 360 degrees in a circle. Uh, if it has an R there, um, it'll be set to radians, where there's two pi, uh, radians in a circle so it's just over six so when you use sine cos and tan on the higher you'll get very different answers um, if you're not sure talk to your teacher just say can you check my calculator any teacher will, will show you uh, the correct setting for it sometimes people fiddle around with the settings on these they're very easy to reset and again any maths teacher will help you if it's coming up with weird numbers here every time you switch it on whatever they can sort that out for you but make sure you have your own um, Make sure your pencils are sharp, make sure you've checked everything. But the most important thing is just put it in your bag the night before the exam and just forget about it. So get yourself really ready so you're not panicking in the morning getting that stuff. Because the last thing you want to be doing in the morning is panicking, which we are not wanting to do. Uh, next piece of advice is pace yourself in the exam. Now, uh, there's uh, an hour and 45 minutes for the exam and there's 100 marks. So roughly speaking, on any of the exams, that, that's the EdXL, the AQA is slightly different maybe, uh, OCR might be slightly different, Foundation Higher is slightly different, but it's roughly speaking a minute a mark. So you shouldn't be spending 10 minutes on a three mark question. Okay, so you've got to be sensible about how long you're going to spend on each question. There are going to be some questions that are really difficult, but they should be, they should carry more marks. If they don't, if you're finding a question difficult, move on. Just move on to the next question and make sure you come back to that. Some people, I've, uh, some students I've taught in the past, have spent ages just on one question, trying to get that one done. And yet there's been loads later on in mock papers or exams that, that they could have done had they have got onto them. The worst thing to happen is you don't get to where you want to in the exam. If you're looking for a B grade, A grade, A star, you don't get to those questions. Or if you're on the foundation paper, you're looking for a C grade, but you don't get to those questions. There could be, the rest of the exam is really simple, that you find it very easy, and that one question is the one holding you up, so don't let it. Some people start at the end of the paper and work their way backwards. 
Uh, I personally don't recommend that, but if it works for you, go for it. You can always go back to questions later on. The one bugbear I have, one bugbear, I've got loads of bugbears, is students who sit there, close the exam paper, right, that's it, done. And we'll talk about that maybe in a bit. The next one is never round too early. Now this is an odd one. I wanted to make a list of five that no one has. Um, got the same list as me, maybe. I don't know, maybe they do. This one is about, it's more to do with the calculator paper, but it does apply to non-calculator paper. When you round, you are only going to round your answer, so to one decimal place, three significant figures, whatever it is. Don't round your working out. They are looking with trigonometry, Pythagoras and things like that, for you to do multiple calculations. If you do a bit of trigonometry or Pythagoras or whatever, and you get an answer, and you need to then use that answer for something else, if you need to, write maybe eight decimal places down, write the whole calculator display down before you move on. What I do is I just keep it in the calculator and I just show the examiner that I've kept it in the calculator by writing whatever it is, 8.23 and I do just three little dots saying I've kept the full number. Now, got to be honest with you, most mark schemes when that does happen are quite lenient. Uh, they will give a range of answers uh, in the mark scheme saying because they know that people will round it and they don't want to deduct you too much but it's just the way of doing things it's much better if you just round your answers make sure you do round your answers even if it doesn't necessarily explicitly tell you to try and make sure that if it's reasonable if it makes sense to round your answers that you round your answers and you show the examiner what you've rounded it to Sometimes the questions say, give your answer to a suitable degree of accuracy. Well, then there will be a mark for rounding your answer. Sometimes it says, write the full calculator display. Make sure you write the full calculator display, but don't scroll right on this. This goes on for a while. Okay? And some calculators go on almost indefinitely. So just literally what comes up on the screen, write down. Right, next one. Doing well? Check your answers. Now I alluded to this earlier, you need to make sure that if you have time at the end of the exam, which you should do, that you check all your answers, that you go back and check them. And there's two ways of checking your answers. The first one is obviously just do the question again and see if you get the same answer. So you look at your calculations, check they make sense, times or add or whatever it is that you're doing and check that the actual answer makes sense. Now, you should be obviously writing down all your working out. It's, it's just not, not uh, you're not gonna get the top marks anymore for just writing answers. And there are some, some questions that you almost get, or that you get zero for. Um, some questions say, the answer is such and such, how did, that, how did we get this answer? Well, you're not going to get one for the answer because it says it in the question, okay? And there are sometimes, I mean, even the best of us, I mean, I, as you can see on my videos, I've made, I think, two mistakes so far, which is actually pretty good. I think I said clockwise instead of anti-clockwise or something. Okay, I've been teaching for 10 years. I've got A's, A-level and degree and everything else, okay? And yet I'm still making mistakes. So if I'm still making mistakes, you guys will. However smart you are, you will still make mistakes. It's human nature, unfortunately. So just make sure you show your work now and then you check it. Okay, even the simplest stuff uh, you can make. I mean, I've done all of these videos on all these complicated topics and yet clockwise and anti-clockwise is where I make a mistake. Okay, sometimes it's the simplest stuff. Now I said there were two things when I say check your answers. First one we've just discussed. The second one is if you're calculating the height of a man and you get 1.3 centimeters, or if you're doing the height of a tree and you get 10 miles, that doesn't make sense. The exam won't create these giant people or you know, really tiny trees or the other way around. It won't create this stuff. It will be realistic in its measurements. So just check if your answers make sense. For instance, a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse, the one opposite the right angle, that has to be the longest. So if you're doing a Pythagoras one, just check it. Is that the longest? Does it make sense? If you're working out a length and you get 0.00013 or something, and the other values are quite large integers, 
then just check, right, hang on, that looks weird. It maybe is the answer, but let's just check it. And it's worthwhile doing. It's worthwhile just taking a step back and going, is this right? Does this look right? And the last one really is the most important. Be confident. Okay, The difference between people getting the lower end of what their target is and the higher end of what their target is and what they want is just confidence. Okay, You're not going to move from an, a G grade to an A star grade with confidence, but it could be the difference between a grade. Those people who I, I think are a little bit overconfident always do better than those people I think are underconfident. The issue with overconfidence is you, <laughs> you end up with students that don't revise. Well, that's a problem. Okay, but you wouldn't be watching this if you were a student who didn't do any revision. Use all of your focus to be confident. You have worked so hard, I'm guessing. You have worked so hard over the last few years. Okay, you've been preparing for this GCSE since you were aged four or five. Okay, that's this is the qualification that this has been building up to when you've been doing adding and subtracting back then, directed numbers, when you've been doing algebra in year seven, when you've been building and building and building, this is it. You've been working hard over the last few months, doing mock papers, past papers, YouTube video tutorials, whatever you've been doing. You've been working hard over the last few days in the last final build up to the exam. So trust yourself, be confident in yourself. The amount of people I've seen commenting saying, oh, is this gonna be the hardest thing ever? Okay, well, maybe, maybe it's the hardest paper ever. You're only competing against other people doing the same paper. Okay? If nationally everyone finds this paper difficult, they will lower the grade boundaries. That's why no one has a clue what the grade boundaries will be until after they've marked them. So don't let a single question throw you. Now, last year, a lot of people were talking about Hannah Sweets. Oh, I failed because of Hannah Sweets. That's not good enough, guys. That's not good enough. You need to look at that question. There might be one this year because they got so many public, so much publicity last year. They might think, oh, right, fantastic. Let's do another one of those. Mix algebra and something we haven't mixed it with before or mix number with something we haven't mixed it with before. Okay? The difference between someone who does well and someone who does badly is not the people who can answer that question. It's the people who look at that question and go, oh, I'll give it a go. Du -du 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 -du. Maybe that's right, maybe that's wrong, but I'm just going to carry on. I'm not going to let it throw me. An awful lot of people last year were saying, I failed because of Hannah Sweet. It wasn't even worth that many marks. Okay, so you've got to look at the bigger picture. You don't need 100% to get an A star. Okay, so you can afford just to say, do you know what? That question's too difficult. I'm going to move on. I'm confident enough in my abilities with the other questions that I will get enough to get the grade that I want. Okay, so if a question like that comes up on Thursday, don't worry about it. Okay, it happens. Okay, not a problem. Just move on. Okay, so make sure you are confident. Don't stress out. Okay, everyone else, every single other year 11 is in the same boat as you. They're doing the same exam. Okay, obviously different exam boards, but they're sitting there doing a maths paper. So you have nothing to worry about. Just think about all the stuff that you've been doing. Think about all the preparation you've had and you will be fine. Okay, so that's my five exam tips. A uh, little bit of news, uh, some of you might have noticed the uh, uh, website is working a lot quicker. Okay, that's not by chance. The reason I haven't done a video in a while is I've spent an awful long, long time, way too long, completely rebuilding the site, making sure that it works a lot quicker. Uh, I've spent a lot of uh, money Mula on um, servers that we've now uh, I don't know, doubled the capacity pretty much every couple of days. Um, it's now a point where it's holding uh, today I think 600 users at a time, um, I think more than that. Uh, in fact today for instance we've had a user every second, so one user every second on the site so it's uh, yeah it's doing well bless it. Um, and uh, and it hasn't it hasn't shut down at all today, and it's been it's by far its busiest day. Uh, we had uh, ten times more users today than we did on Sunday, for instance. Um, so it's working well, um, which is good because I want it up and running for the paper two prediction, which is my next topic. Um, now the paper two prediction, obviously I've made one already, which I have no idea. Uh, the paper two prediction is the best one for you guys. 
The reason it's the best one is because I will have seen paper one and so I can create paper two with the topics that didn't come up. I've also got some correlational stuff that says if this comes up then this will come up on paper two uh, to help me out as well. Um, I will be creating a video of all of the topics for paper two um, to revise, uh, the top ones to revise and I'll be rejigging the paper. Now what's important to know here is I can't talk about it straight away. There is something called an embargo over over it and those of you who use um, an, a popular online student uh, website forum, uh, you probably know which one I'm talking about, they always moan every year, don't talk about the exams, don't talk about the exams, um, edXL, o a AQA, OCR, you know, blah blah blah. You might think, well why can't we talk about them? Well, you guys are taking the exam on Thursday, unless you're seeing this in a different country. If you are seeing this in a different country, you might still be doing it on Thursday or you might be doing it on Friday. Um, obviously the time zones and all that stuff and uh, some people are doing the exam later on. So what would be annoying is if those people have all the answers before they go into the exam. So um, we're not allowed to talk about it until a certain point. I think, uh, I think so I can come back to me, I think it is Saturday that we're allowed to talk about it. As soon as I'm allowed to put that paper two prediction out and all those videos, they will be out online. Uh, I don't work on a Friday, so I will sit there at home and create them. So yay, there we go. Um, now there has been a comment, uh, it was by Sandy H. Uh, it says, what should I do the night before the exam? Which I think it's a good question, so I think we can end on that night before the exam. Now, some teachers will say, don't touch anything. Don't do anything the night before the exam. I I'm, don't believe that at all. I think you do what you think you need to do. The only thing I will say is make sure you have a good night's sleep. Make sure you don't you know, fill up with caffeine or energy drinks or whatever. Make sure you have good sleep. Maths is incredibly difficult to do when you're tired. So it's not gonna help you. Any revision, anything like that, it's not gonna help you. So get an early night. But if you want to sit down and do an hour of maths, go through the equations, Sokotoa and you know area of a triangle, don't forget with an area of a triangle you've got to halve it, okay? You've got to halve it with an area of a triangle. But if you want to do that, brilliant, fine, do it. But just make sure you go to sleep early, make sure you're well rested, ready for the exam. The only thing I would say also is don't do anything out of the ordinary. Just make it a normal school night, make it a normal night, don't do anything unusual so that when you wake up it's as usual you're not you're not uh, overslept you know and some people go to sleep earlier well don't go to sleep earlier go to sleep on when you regularly would do so your body feels quite natural on thursday morning ready for the exam now i know the exam's in the afternoon but <laughs> so you feel just normal normal normality is what we're after right i've been rambling way too much i thought this would be like a three minute video but i've been talking way too much uh, so I'm going to stop it there. If you do have something to say that you want to say, uh, join us on Twitter, YouTube, uh, talk to us on YouTube. Although uh, there's been a lot of comments on YouTube. I'm, I'm not very good at responding to all of them, but I will try and be better at that. We've got a Facebook account, and obviously you can talk to us on the OnMaps forum. Um, I th we've got thousands of people on the OnMaps site. Uh, so if you've got a question, please talk to us on there, and we'll come back to you. And the last thing I want to say, obviously, is the best of luck. This is the last video I'm going to do before the paper one exam. So I wish everyone the best of luck. Thank you.